Hello my lovelies. So today I am going to be taking you through my January 22 setup and as I said in my last video it is another jellyfish theme. If you haven't seen my last video <laughs> it, uh, it has two different jellyfish themes, uh, theme ideas from the last few months that I didn't actually upload. And yeah, so this is my next one. I was going to put a little face on this jellyfish, but I changed my mind. So I added the tentacles in pinky, purpley colours, and I added some flowers and things. And then I outlined them in pen. And then I went over those, as I'm doing now, those pen marker marks and outlined the shapes and then added the wispy tentacle bits and then after I do that I just add a few little dots either side of some of the tentacles and I also added leaves on this one because I added flowers so it's sort of like a flower jellyfish and I really like it I, I like the idea of um, different jellyfish themes so to make this spread a little bit more interesting I added some bubbles around the outside and I added the January to the right hand side sort of in a vertical way <laughs> um, the coloring on the on the body of the jellyfish I went for a darker purple on the bottom part a light pink on the top and then I sort of faded the colors in between and I use my white gel pen to add a few highlights here and there. I do wish that the lighting on this video is better because the colouring is so much prettier <laughs> than what you can see here. It's a lot gentler and um, it's more like a baby pink. But for the life of me, I just cannot get my camera to pick up what I'm actually looking at. I don't know what I'm doing with the settings or how I'm doing it wrong, but I just can't seem to do it. <laughs> so this will have to do. Um, so again, I'm not using a black um, to create this spread because I wanted it to look softer. Thank you for the person in the comments in my setup, 2022 setup, that uh, helped me find the word I wanted. It makes it look softer when you don't use the black. And I wanted to achieve that look because it's, you know, all pinky and gentle and quite sweet looking. So next I've got my monthly setup page. And as I said in the last video, it's sort of a combination of two other spreads. I haven't added all the extra bits I usually do with this layout with the goals and the highlight and the low point because I just don't feel like I'm going to have the time to actually fill that in. Now, look at this calendar. Just look at it. Can you see what's going wrong here? Can you see? Hang on a minute. I should have more weeks than that. This is where the realization sets in. I think, oh no, what am I gonna do about that? Um, I leave it. <laughs> I end up just leaving it because I don't wanna cover up what I've already done and then start again. So I'm, I'm missing a week in January from this calendar. Luckily, as I said in the last video, I don't really tend to use this calendar other than it just for being, for aesthetic reasons. I just like the way they look. <clears throat> so it's not a huge problem. Um, because on the right hand side I've got my vertical look I'm still trying to figure out what to do about this <laughs> um, on the right hand side I've got my vertical calendar and I've got almost a full page to be able to set to like a, a full line each day to be able to write in and then on the left hand side I did another little jellyfish doodle I added a space for notes and then obviously I wrote January in the top right hand corner and I'm really pleased with the way this one turned out. I like the colors, I like the, the fonts I've used. It's fairly practical. If I wanna use icons in that little calendar, I might give it a try this month. I might actually give it a go. Um, I added the border around that sort of connects to January. I think adding a border to the spread I don't know if you can hear the baby. <laughs> I added the border to the spread and I just think it adds something. I find that when I'm doing a bullet journal setup, it's not, it doesn't take a lot to add, to make it a little bit more pleasing to look at. It's hard to explain, but like adding these weekend boxes in, adding the colouring for the weekend makes a really big difference. Um, 
and adding the lines for when I do my notes section to separate the, the different lines. It just seems to make a really big difference. Adding at least two different fonts in a spread makes a big difference. If it's all the same font, it's, it's nice, but I prefer having two separate ones. It just makes the spread a little bit more dynamic. I don't know. It just makes a difference. <laughs> So after I've set up the main important bits of this spread, I move on to creating the jellyfish. Again, I'm drawing the main body of the jellyfish and then adding those wispy bits with my Tombow. And then I've got three different colors for that that I've used to make it a little bit more, bit, give it a bit more contrast. And then I'm going over those marker lines again and then adding the wispy bits and then just adding the dots around the edges. And it's as simple as that. That's how easy it is to make these jellyfish. Um, and then you can see again, I'm doing the same on the body and leaving, I'm leaving a white line, a, a white area on the body. So it looks almost like it's kind of highlighted. I'm so disappointed with the way the colours have come out on camera. I promise it's a lot prettier than this. <laughs> um, that's the other thing. I've got a very light grey and I'm just going around the border and it makes that spread just pop off the page a little bit more. Um, thickening some of the lines so that some of the font looks a bit bolder and that's it. And then I'm on to my Align a Day page. So my line a day page and the productivity tracker are probably my two favorite spreads in my bullet journal, always every month. I love the line a day because my memory is awful. So I really like to be able to look back and remember what I've been doing each day. It also helps me decide whether or not, you know, I need to start trying to get out of a rut if I'm sort of doing the same sort of things every day. Um, I can also see whether or not I need to be a little bit more sociable if I don't see very many social activities on the line of day. And also it's where I just add, you know, anything that I think, oh, I'd, I'd like to remember that from this day. So it's just nice to look back on. It's just one of my favorite spreads. And then the productivity tr tracker, which uh, was originally created by the Booster Journal, looks very different um, than mine because I've sort of adapted mine to make it easier to set up, but it still does the job. I just use much, much smaller icons. And if you haven't seen it, I will put it uh, a link in the little eye icon in the top right hand corner of the screen on you know how to set one up the traditional way that the uh, booster journal originally created and I sort of talk through how to use it and what it's for and that sort of thing but yeah this is another one of my favorite spreads mostly because at the end of the month if I've been consistent with filling it out I can just see all the things I've done and I feel a lot more productive and it makes me feel like yeah see I, I have got a lot done even if it's mundane tasks like tidying the kitchen and getting the laundry done I can see that I have been productive and I've been doing stuff and I just get a sense of pride when I when I check this page so yeah it's definitely one of my favorites so line a day productivity tracker and then my health and habits love life health and habits and I've really condensed my, <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but this is my condensed form of habit tracking. I've got lots of things that I need to track for various different reasons. I don't have to do it, but I find it really, really helpful. So I've got my sleep, how productive I was, my energy levels and my stress levels in the top bar. And I use a, a dot system I've got different you can see here the different dots and I just put in the different dots each day on where I am and then I can see if things correlate I mean usually if I don't get a lot of sleep I'm not as productive <laughs> um, but it's odd because sometimes even if I haven't got a lot of sleep I've got a lot of energy so it's a it's a bit odd and then my mood I've got space for a.m. midday and p.m. because that changes all the time my mood fluctuates quite drastically throughout the day and then I've got a relationship tracker a mini relationship tracker uh, just to make sure that me and Leah are on the same page and that things are going the way we want it to go and then I've got how much effort I put in for the day um, 
a.m. cleaning, p.m. cleaning, because I've got sort of routines that I like to try and get done in the morning and evening. Um, cooking, and I've added space in for Tristan and Ridley again because I need to start making sure I'm doing schoolwork with them because I'm not doing enough schoolwork with them. Um, it's sort of, I've fallen by the wayside a little bit as Felix has got a little bit more demanding. So I really need to actually look at that little hand, speak of the devil. <laughs> Getting a setup done with Felix on your left is really, really tricky. <laughs> but he's enjoying the pens. Bash, bash, bash. And then I've got a space for if I have a nap or a rest. I tend to do a lot better when I have a nap in the day. Especially with being up. Felix does not sleep well. I mean, he wakes up four or five times a night on average. I don't think he's ever slept more than a four-hour stretch since he's been born. He always wakes up. So, um... <clears throat> I'm currently trying to do something about that, but I don't really believe in the cry it out method. I, I don't like that. I know some people do that, but I'm not a big fan of sleep training. And I tend to go down the gentle parent route. And I don't necessarily like the name gentle parenting because I think it gives people the wrong idea. People always end up saying, oh, you're going to end up with, you know, tearaways and blah, blah, blah. Just because you're a gentle parent doesn't mean that you don't discipline your children it's not that there aren't consequences to their actions it's just the consequences are more I don't know they, they make more sense they're more logical consequences and it's done with uh, I don't know I, I probably shouldn't go into it because it's quite a controversial issue apparently if you look at the forums and stuff online but um, yeah it's just my preference I know everybody does things however they how they want to raise their children but I'm more with the gentle parenting. I do not believe in hitting your children. And there is not one thing anybody can say that will change my mind on that. If you hit your children, I'm not judging you. We all do what we think is best for our kids. But I will never do it. I do not believe in it. So I'll just put that out there. <laughs> and then I've got um, breakfast, lunch and dinner to make sure that I'm eating, which I'm really not. I'm not eating enough. I'm a snacker. Um, not necessarily healthy snacks. So this month I'm going to really, really try to have at least two meals a day, at least. Um, and then on the right hand side, I've got a space for notes because if there's any anomalies in these trackers, um, I can write down why it might have happened. Like if I got zero sleep, I can say maybe Felix was up all night long. Or if I got a lot of sleep, maybe it's because I had extra nap time or stuff like that. I can add extra things in if my mood is really really drastically different from one day to the next it might be because there's been an event that's been you know either really good or really bad so it just gives me a little bit more insight into my tracker and then because of my 2022 um, condensed tracking section um, you might have seen if you watch my 2022 setup if I don't have the energy to fill all this in I can just quickly go and do it in that one um, and at the end of the month I can you know, fill it all in where I need to and have a better overview, a really quick overview of what's been going on. Then in the final pages, I've got my weekly setups and I've done another Dutch door because I just feel that works really, really well for me. I've got the mini calendar in the top left hand page and I like to cross the weeks off as I go through them because I've got a really bad habit of going which Monday are we in is this the second Monday or the third I don't know so it's easier for me to track it that way um, I've got school info for the boys which is going to be the times that they have to go into school because it keeps changing because of COVID because they're doing staggered timings and things um, and also they've got different forms and classes and teachers and sign-ins so I like to have that information there because otherwise I forget it so <laughs> at least it's there right on hand and then Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday um, and the bottom left hand corner is going to be for things that always happen on those days that week like when Tristan has PE or Ridley has PE or if there's after school clubs things like that so I don't forget and then I've got my um, week I've, it's two weeks to view I don't tend to need more than that and there's the baby your good little face eee, so cute that's my clock going 
Hang on. Yeah, so I find uh, the, no, that little face, that two weeks to view is much better for me because I'm not overwhelmed by a lot of blank space and I tend to have just enough to put everything I want in there. And then I've got a section on the right hand side for tasks and notes uh, for that month. And then here I've got a mind map. And this is the best way for me to sort of brain dump. And I put this in this month because I had this spare space. So I thought I'd try out doing this one this month and see if anything comes of it. Anything that comes into my mind that goes to any of these things. And I've left a blank one as well because I'm not sure what category I might want to add. So that's it for this month's plan with me. I actually did it. I got it out for January. Yay! <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. It really, really helps my channel out. If you'd like to see more from me, please press that subscribe button. And I've had a few people say that they've stopped getting notifications for my videos and they've missed some. So if you press that bell icon and make sure it's um, for each upload, then that shouldn't happen, hopefully. Um, yeah, I wish you all a very happy new year and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.